Alan Moorhead, and welcome to HorseCity.com TV, your connection to the horse world. On today's show, we're going to put you in the saddle with Shorty Coger. She and her staff are going to show you how they create custom cowboy hats. At the barn, we talk with Pino Blangiforte from Leather Therapy. Then at the clinic, I had a chance to talk to Dr. Mike about gastric ulcers and how you can treat them. And we'll wrap up our show with Angel Caroli, a young man who's in training at Hollow Creek Farms in Aiken, South Carolina, for a possible trip to the Olympics that's in the irons. All this and more today on HorseCity.com TV. In the saddle. This is uh, pure beaver. Our hats are made of either uh, be pure beaver or beaver blend. And uh, this is beaver that comes from the belly, the fur underneath the belly of the beaver. And uh, it comes in a natural color that has no dye in it or anything. And this is a cone that, that comes out of the the vat after they've run, they take, it takes eight ounces of fur to make a beaver hat. They run it up a conveyor belt and there's a big cone there that sucks all the fur down and spins it in hot boiling water. And after that does, it takes a long time to do that. And after that's done, then this comes out. And they keep rolling this cone and putting it through hot boiling water baths and it intertwines all the fur. And so that's the beginning of what a hat looks like. And that is actually natural beaver fur with no dye in it. We choose a block that uh, will suit our customers' head, head size and shape. And, we, and this is what we receive when we get our raw hat bodies. It looks like that. It's real thick, doesn't have any uh, shape to it at all, and it's real hairy. Now what we do here is we get a lot of steam to this hat body, so uh, when we put that block in there, we pull these fingers out after we get it real good and wet, and then he'll set that block in, and uh, we'll let that dry for a long time, and that will set the shape of the, the height of the crown and the block and everything, and it'll pull that brim out, and that brings the stiffness out in the brim also. So that's what is called a blocking machine. It's probably built in the 19... 20s, I'm going to say, you can't really buy them anymore that looks like that. So this is all a dying art that we have here. So after we let that dry, then we go over to the crown iron machine. What this does is it irons the crown of the hat, which makes the stiffness come out in the crown of the hat. We wet that crown real good and get it real good and wet, and then this will come all the way around and we usually iron a crown about 20, 25 minutes, and that makes the crown real stiff. Uh, everything's done by hand, like I said over here, and we d use different grids of sandpaper to sand all our hats with, and it makes for a much nicer finish on the hat and more of a, a silky look when it's completed. What makes our hats better than a shelf hat is first, they're all hand done. The dye will not run on our black hats. Our hats come from, hat bodies come from Winchester, which puts out the best quality of, of hat bodies I've seen. But all that is done counterclockwise because that's the way that the beaver fur is spun in the hat. And she'll take that down till it's got a real fine look to it. And then after that's completed, then we go back over and do another process which stiffens our brim up. And then we come back and we sand the brims of the hat until we get that just exactly the, the look that we want. And then, uh, then the finishing touches that we do are, we print a sweatband, which is what she's doing over here. They're printing names for sweatbands in the hat. We do that with gold foil, so it's done very nice. And we print in there the quality of the hat, custom made especially for, but there's way more to making a hat than, uh, than people realize. There's probably at least 20 some steps and to make one hat, uh, it takes about three days, actually, because you've got to allow for drying time and everything. We're at the barn with Pino Blangiforte. Joining me right now is Pino Blangiforte, one of the founders of Leather Therapy. It's a pleasure meeting you, Pino. Oh, my pleasure being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I have been a huge fan of your products for many, many years. And first of all, I found out that your product's probably the best, and uh, not all care, leather care, is quite the same. Talk about that, please. And there have been many products in the market for, for many years. And what we tried to do through innovation and technology is enhance the ability of the effectiveness of the products. 
We've developed an array of products here that enable people to clean, condition, and protect all of your leathers. Well, yeah, we're talking about all leathers, it, whether it be English, Western. Absolutely, you can protect your investment. It's just so easy to clean and, and condition with our products. They're really one-step products. You could just simply apply the wash, for example, and, and wipe it down and get rid of all of the alkaline sweat that builds on your saddlery and tack and, and keep it looking good. Uh, you can follow that with a treatment of our restoring conditioner to keep all of the leather pliable and, and, and comfortable as well. Now, speaking of the uh, conditioner, I had asked you before, what is the difference between the finisher and also the conditioner? You did explain it to me, but perhaps our viewers don't know. Well, one of the differences is that the conditioner works on the interior part of the leather. We want to take care of all of the fibers to keep the fibers comfortable and pliable to prevent cracking and splitting. So no matter if you have an old saddle or a new saddle, this will help in the break-in period and maintain the longevity of the older saddles. The other side benefit is that this leather therapy restorer contains a mold and mildew inhibitor so that you're getting continual protection while you're having items stored in a barn. This was a lady whose tank got uh, rained on in a barn and when she came back she found that the ravages of the rain converted into mold. We cleaned and conditioned that and, and brought it back. So you have a way of bringing that back. And now this was two years ago you can see that there's no mole regrowth back on the other side of the boot. And the fi finisher, I guess, basically seals everything, correct? And now the finisher is the thing that helps to bring back the protective luster of any of the leathers that have had significant abrasions or cuts. It's like a new skin. The restorer took care of the inside, now we're taking care of the outside. So you can convert something that looks like this back to something that you can go out with at night. Now for a lot of us, you know, uh, mold and mildew, a huge problem during the summertime because of the humidity. You have a solution for that as well. If you clean and condition with our products, the restorer does not wash out or leach out. So you're getting continual protection during the storage period. What's nice about both of the products is that they dry residue free, so you don't have the ability of dirt and dust and mold spores adhering to them during the storage period. So you're getting extra protection. Now my chaps. Um, how do I clean them? What do I use? I use a brush, but I found out today, and I don't know, maybe I'm the only one who did not know this, but I found out today that you can actually clean your, uh, your chops in the washing machine. New product. Right. We took care of, of the tack and, and saddlery aspects. Now we have the ability through our patented products to take care of some of your working leather. So whether or not you have fleece, your suede chaps, riding gloves, and even your full seat breeches, you have the ability of just taking those items, putting them in a the washing machine, cleaning them, and also protecting the leather components there. Water and rain tend to be one of the enemies of, of leather. And what we've done here uh, with our product leather therapy water repellent is provide the ability of leather resisting some of the ravages of, of water. You can see here on the side that was not treated, how the water permeates. So you're getting water, dirt, and sweat going in. And on the side here that was treated, you get that protection. So if you're an event rider or cross-country rider getting sweaty saddle pads, this is a way of giving you protection against the infusion of water and sweat. In case someone is not near a tax store or they just want to get online, you have a website for them. Contact us at levotherapy.com and we'd be happy to direct you to a dealer. Well, it's a pleasure meeting you. Wonderful line of products. I do recommend them. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Up next, we're at the clinic, where Dr. Mike and myself had a chance to talk about gastric ulcers and how you can treat them. And we'll wrap up our show in the irons with Angel Caroli, a young man who's in training for a trip to the Olympics.